You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Watch your cucumber ears, it's yet another Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast for everyone aged 1 to 99 and 101 to infinity. I can't make that clearer than that, can I? No 100-year-olds, no one who's older than infinity, infinity or beyond, no one who's younger than one. You have to have rules. Those are these podcast shows' rules, as well as no yaks, because they're just silly. I mean, look at a yak. Go on, look at it, look at it. Yeah, see? Silly, isn't it? It's really silly. And no one who says the word spoons as spoons. That is not allowed. Stop doing that. It's really annoying. Uh, But welcome to the rest of you two radio nonsense. I'm still Tiernan, despite all my efforts. And how are you all getting on? Is homeschooling going okay? I thought you might need some cheering up. So I thought, look at this way. If you're homeschooling now, then maybe when you get to go back to school, you can do school homing. You can turn up to lessons in your pyjamas. You can shout, uh, no mum, duh, at your teacher. Or during PE, you can just put the telly on and sit down. I'm sure all schools will be absolutely fine with you doing that. So you can look forward to it. Exciting. Um, I can't imagine you have much spare time at the moment with all your homeschool, homework, schoolwork, home, home, schoolwork, school, home, homework, work. Oh, that's confusing. And finding all those new ways to annoy your parents, like, you know, constantly shouting their names. And then when they reply, what? Or race towards you, just say, sorry, that was just a regulatory alarm test to see if the system is still working. And then quietly walking off. Um, But if you do have time between all those things... We need questions from you so we can make more of these shows. Um, After this episode, we only have one more question that's been sent in for me to ask a comedian. And then that's it. We've run out of questions. So if you'd like to hear more of these, then please ask a grown up type to help you email us your questions about absolutely anything in the universe at all to podcast at comedy club for kids. That's the number four dot co dot UK as soon as you can. Right. And now to this week's show, where I am joined by the brilliant John Luke Roberts, who will be answering so many questions. Hi, John Luke. How are you doing? I'm quite well, all things considered. It's a lovely day. Um, I went out to sit on my roof and read a book in the sun. So that was nice. Uh, How are you? Yes, all very good. Thanks. How How do you sit on your roof? Is it easy to sit on your roof? Do you have to do some sort of... Cat burglar style climbing. Well, there's a ladder. There's also a sign saying you are not allowed on this roof unless you are trained and authorised. But sure. But I think I've. I know what it's like up there. As long as I don't jump over the edge, I'm absolutely fine. And I feel that, given the current circumstances, it's okay to go up there and sit on the roof. Yeah, I mean, I'd argue that you've. I'm guessing you do it quite regularly, so you must be trained. I used to do it and then they put the signs up and I'm such a stickler for authority that I then stopped. But I've now started again on the basis that nobody else is using it and um, and I'd quite like some sun, please. But I'd, I'd argue that if you've done it enough times, you are trained in doing it. Oh, and therefore, I, yes, that I, means you've got the skills to do it. I have the skills. I don't have the certificate certification to do it. Um, so that's a very long word, obviously, which means it's very... Well, they're hard to come by, the certification. Yeah, yeah, got, now, yeah, I have got a driving certification. And, well, I guess that's a reasonable analogy. For a, yeah. Before I had that certification, I, was, I would say I was able to drive, but I still don't think I should have been allowed without the certification. Sure, but I guess it's like that thing of if you'd... If you'd never gone up on the roof, how would you get trained in going up on the roof? So you have to have done it a few times. It's true. To know yeah. that you're okay to do it. Well, I guess yeah. the equivalent would be having an examiner or a you know a teacher by your side as you go up on the roof. But the problem is the ladder's quite narrow, so that would actually make it a lot more dangerous. Yeah, or you'd have to have a very small teacher, like a bug or some sort of small rodent. Yeah, like a cricket, I guess, would be yeah. nice, like chimney cricket. That could be that could be one way of doing. It. I, I should add that if any children are listening to this, please don't go up on your roof unless you are trained or authorized. But if you are both of those things, then go for it. I say. Yeah, I mean, there's there's safe roofs and there's unsafe roofs. I think you can use your common sense to look at a roof and go, ah, oh, that's not safe. 
Yeah, like if it's got bombs or spikes on it or something. Yeah, absolutely. Or if it's slopey, a slopey roof, I, I really wouldn't bother with. Yeah, doesn't sound. No, no, Unless it slopes down to the middle and then actually really safe. Yes, or I guess it slopes all yeah all the way to the ground and then it's like a big slide. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, that would work. That could be quite good. Wow, so so many so many roof possibilities that I hadn't thought of before. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, you've been uh, you're, you're obviously apart from when you're going on the roof, you are uh, uh, stuck indoors like all of us. Um, have you been? Have you got any good tips about how to make it fun? Have you been keeping yourself entertained in any good ways that maybe the listeners might be able to join in with? My advice would be to watch Home Alone. Um, you can even stretch to Home Alone too, but don't go further than that. And then um, using just the object you have in your house, make some plans for how you would set a trap to disable a burglar were they were they to come in. Um, you have that's a really good idea. Have, have you done that in your own place? Well, yes, yes, it's quite high up. Um, it does make it tricky though because you, sometimes you forget they're there, and then you you set them off and you get a spade in the face. Um, so do <laughs> do do write notes to yourself reminding you that you've done it otherwise uh could be terrible um yeah yeah that could be really awful like that could have been a very different film uh if uh you know if it had gone that way as well well kevin just just uh getting himself hit in the face over and over again by things he's set up yes yes very different film indeed but also probably very enjoyable for its own merit yeah uh, yeah you can see the upside hmm. yeah very much so well that's that's a very good tip so peter so people at home can set things up to uh to work out how to stop burglars getting in and i guess you know they can kind of you know if they did want to make things more fun for themselves they can then you know ask younger brothers or sisters to act as burglars Mm -hmm. see if any of the traps work yes now uh, for that you will need a stripy top and a mask um Ah. the mask is very important for the burglar bit because if you don't have the mask then uh, you just look french very true very true very fine line very fine line but you've got to get it right you have to get it right Yes, it's it's particularly tricky if the burglar is stealing onions, actually, because then, you know, it's all it's all a muddle. That's really confusing. Yeah. And uh, I guess also if they're like maybe a baguette. Yes. So, I mean, and if you steal a baguette and a bicycle, you might as well be French. Wow. But wearing a mask. Wearing a mask. Then uh, what is it? A French burglar? We We just don't know. A mime artist. A mime. It could be a mime artist. Yes. Or. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, Frenchman could be the name of a superhero and they wear masks. That's true. But then I guess if they're stealing things, that's not a very good superhero. Uh, well, if they're stealing from the rich um, to give to the poor in a sort of redistribution of wealth thing, that's a different matter. Sure, sure. Wow. Frenchman sounds awesome. I've changed my mind about him yeah. very, very quickly yeah. indeed. Yeah. yeah, very good. Nice. Um this podcast uh, obviously is audio, uh, as you know, because um, you can hear it. Uh, I wondered if you had a favourite noise that you might be able to share. I do. I'll do the noise. I don't have the thing you would normally do the noise with, but it's basically when you get oh, wow. a, ruler, a plastic ruler and you put it over the edge of a table and you twang it and then you pull it onto the table to change the pitch of the noise it's making. That's really good. But I mean, you, it sounded good when you did it. Thank you. Thank you. I've had a lot of practice because I've not sure. not had access to a ruler for a while. So if you if people at home don't have a ruler, they can make ruler based oh, yeah. noises. Just, just do just do it with your, with your mouth. Um, yeah, that's really good. And then if there are any burglars who want to get rulers, mm-hmm. they might come in suspecting rulers and then fall into all the traps that you've already set up. That's it exactly. I mean, the, yeah, rulers are quite useful in traps actually um, because they're you know straight. Uh, objects can be used for either propping up boxes, which might trap someone, or for uh, you know part of a marble run or something like that. So you've got to make the decision whether you want to keep the ruler to make the noise, or you want to use it to make a fantastic trap. And is that is that what happened to all your rulers? Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I gave them to law enforcement to help things uh, help things out. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, I, I I appreciate what you've done for for the law. Thank you. Yeah, it's important. Law, law over, law over noises. I say definitely the right way round. Um, and uh, obviously, this show is suitable for everyone aged six to ninety nine, but not for one hundred year olds. I make that clear. Every episode is definitely not for hundred year olds. Hundred and one onwards, also fine. Not for one hundred year olds. Okay. Um, but as it's suitable for everyone of all ages, apart from one hundred, um, is there a rude word that you definitely won't be saying just to make sure that this stays family friendly? 
Uh, yes, I won't be saying wobble bum. So, sorry, wo- wobble wobble bum. bum. Wobble bum. Yeah, I won't. Oh goodness, that's horrible. Well, that's why I won't be won't be saying wobble bum because it's horrible. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No, please don't. Wobble bum is a really horrendous. Wow, that's a really horrendous uh, word. Actually, yeah, quite offensive. Yeah. yeah. So, please. well, we can agree we won't be saying wobble bum. No, no, I, I, as long as you don't say wobble bum, I definitely won't say wobble bum uh, at all during this episode. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, right, well, the, the most important reason that you're here, uh, obviously, John Luke, is that uh, we have had questions sent in this week from Molly, age six, and she has sent us in um, four questions, although one of the questions is actually two questions all at once. So um, are you feeling ready? Are you feeling like you're okay to answer all of these? Yeah, yeah, I warmed up my um, my answering muscles. Oh, amazing! Amazing. Is, it, is there a clever way you can do that? Or... Yeah, you um, you 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 take your lips between your fingers and then you sort of um, blah, 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 uh, wobble them up and down. That's really good. That's really good. Well, um, now that you're limber, I said um, bum. Then I'm glad. What I, was that? Sorry, I nearly said wobble bum, and I'm. Oh goodness! No, no, no! Don't. Yeah, no. I I didn't I didn't hear you say it by accident, so I don't think you said wobble bum. I think you're fine. Right. I think you're okay. Yeah. Few close call. Close call. What? Um, close, yeah. yeah. Um, so question number one from Molly and this is a really important question um, she asks how do you make yourself burp and what would happen if you did a million burps I mean I think it, it is, it's sort of two questions and they're both very important questions um, I, I mean I find the easiest way to make yourself burp is to drink something carbonated uh, and a lot of it very quickly so fizzy water or um you know, a, a, a soda of some kind, but you can also do it just by sort of swallowing air at the back of your throat. Mm. I, 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 it's hard to wait. I've not done it. I nearly did it. Oh, I had it earlier. No, my, my, no. See, uh, but I've, I was really good at it earlier. I think, I think I've, I've lost the knack. I, I, I've never been able to do it. I've always wanted to, and at school it really set me back. Uh, actually, I, I can't. Um, I can't do big ones, but I can. I can generally do little ones. Wait, I'm gonna just. I think I'm too tense. I'm gonna have to relax to do this. Yeah, it might be the pressure of knowing that you need to burp on cue. Is, is I did. I did not feel it, but you. You were speaking. Ugh. Oh no. No, it, I'm, no. It, it's not with me today, and I think it's I'm so sorry. I interrupted the one that you did. I, mean, all, I think it's good to like acknowledge our own um, limitations, and you know, it will make yeah. me happier on the days when I can burp. Well, that's it. Like I said, I, I was never able to. I still can't do it now. And at school, there were children who could burp the entire alphabet oh, yeah. uh, or all sorts of uh, rude words like wobble bum and things like that. And and you know, no, I couldn't do any of it, and I always felt really inadequate. Uh, did you just say um, wobble bum? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Oh, yes, I must have said. Um, but in answer to the other question, what would happen if you did a million burps? Hmm. I don't know, uh, like worldwide, what happens. I do know in the UK that if you do a million burps, you do get a congratulations letter from the Queen. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. And I'm guessing because I'm guessing you know Molly didn't say but i'm guessing it's successive like million burps in a row not like a million burps over your lifetime oh actually no that is that is uh cumulative um that, mm. that will be over your lifetime uh that the queen wants a letter if you do a million burps in a row i don't think anyone's ever done it so we don't know quite the answer but mm. um i'm I, I would expect it to be very exciting yeah yeah very exciting but probably quite exhausting yes um well i think this is why no one's ever done it yeah, fascinating. And I guess the Queen would have to send you a very special letter as well. Well, and she, and it would have to be sent very, very quickly. Um, you know, from the moment you start to the moment you finish, she, she, she within that time period, she'd have to be writing it up. Yeah, she can do that, though. She's pretty fast with letters. Well, she must be. She had a lot of practice. Yeah, and that's where her face is on, like, stamps, isn't it? Because all the letters that she sends. Yeah. Yeah, and she does, yeah. probably doesn't even need the stamp. If she just If she takes the letter they'll deliver it with her so long as she's with it. That's very true. But how do they know if she wants to send it first or second class? Um, The colour of her backdrop. Ah, of course. Of course. That's really obvious. Yes, yes, that makes perfect sense. 
Ugh, the queen. Um, well, so that's that's a very good answer. So we know now how to, Molly knows how to make herself burp, but also maybe what would happen if you did a million burps. Um, although not sure if all at once. Um, one of the other questions she asked uh, was, what do fish eat? Yes, um, they. I believe they eat smaller fish. Right. Okay, but then what do smaller fish eat? Smaller fish. And what do smaller fish eat? Even smaller fish. Wow. How how far down does it go? There must well, be a point where there's the going, smallest fish. Down until you get to the smallest fish. Uh, and what do they eat? They eat the biggest fish. Whoa! I didn't see that coming. Yeah. But it, it is a lot of nibbling involved. They have to kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of... A, a big fish lasts a long time for, 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 for the smallest fish. And they've also got to be wary of not being eaten by a slightly bigger fish while they're doing it. Yes, that's always the risk. Although if they all eat at exactly the same time, um, well, that's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, I bet it is. I, I guess they could also all just say, oh, let's just call it off. And then no, none of them would get eaten. Yeah, they, they can always discuss things. Um, uh, why not? Uh, this is actually, uh, Elton John wrote a song about this called Circle of Life. Um, right. Yeah, which got used in a movie, I think. Yeah, about fish, wasn't it? The Fish King. Yeah, something like that. Some sort of, uh, some sort of, lots of. There were good fish and bad fish, and there was a uh, a, a fish who was a warthog, and um, it was Hamlet told with fish, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah, fishlet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that was. I didn't realize that was what the song was about. That makes perfect sense now. And so, hang on. If, if say for people, I, I don't eat fish. Uh, I'm, I'm a veggie, a vegetarian, but. Um, but if you did eat fish, are you taking a fish out of the circle of fish eating or do they just sort of jump along a step? And No, but you do opt in to uh, a, a, a fish bigger than you are then allowed to eat you. Right. You're basically joining the, the circle of fish. You're becoming, for all intents and purposes, a fish if you eat a fish. Because you know that phrase, you are what you eat. Wow, so it must be quite a lot of cats that have eaten fish and now run the risk of being eaten by a much bigger fish at any point. Um, do you want to repeat that? Because my email went. Okay. <laughs> 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 I wondered what that was. Um, I think it was a very pleasant cyclist. Um, I Yeah, so there must be cats that have eaten fish and now run the risk of being eaten by a much bigger fish at some point in their lives. That's, that's true. That's why they're so um, averse to going towards water. Hmm. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Wow. That's a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. I, I assume they ate chips or something. Mm. No, no, no. no. Chips. Um, ch uh, chips eat chips. Right. And, but smaller chips. So just sort of like the big chips from the chip shop eat French fries. Yeah, yeah. And then they eat, um, they eat uh, the thinner French fries. Um, sure. It's got, uh, the sure. Topic, obviously, is, is just a potato eat, eats uh, thick cut chips. And thick cut chips eat, eat normal chips, and then normal chips eat French fries, and then French fries eat, eat very thin French fries. Yeah, yeah, and then there's those little crispy, like uh, are they called grits or, or something that they have in they have in America? And they're just little chunks of crispy chip, and I guess they must eat thick cut chips. The very crunchy, the very, the, I mean, the smallest, um, yeah, the smallest ones eat, eat again. Eat, they eat the full size potatoes. Wow. Wow, I mean that's fascinating. And then I, I guess again we're in the situation where if you eat chips, you run the risk of being eaten. Absolutely. By some much bigger chips. By some by a bigger chip, yeah. Um, oh, that's made life a lot more scary than it was five minutes ago. I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, I, you know, but now that you know, now that we know, um, we can we can come to terms with it, you know. And, and mm. it is scary to begin with, but actually, uh, you know, we can just get used to it. Are any of the traps in your home set up to, you know, get perhaps giant fish or giant chips uh, were they to come into I, your home? No, I you? don't believe I ate those fish and I ate those chips and I knew what I was signing up for. So if, if a fish does want to, uh, if a fish knocks on my door and um, says, hello, I'm, I'm here to eat you, uh, I, I, you know, that's part of the deal. I signed up. <laughs> right. Okay. You sort of go, okay, fair enough. And, uh, Serve yourself up. Yeah, yeah. That's very fair. That's very fair. Right. Um, well, uh, on to the next one. Uh, now, this is a very important topical question uh, that's been asked by Molly. Um, she would like to know, why are loads of people getting coronavirus? Yes. 
Um, well, uh, I think the real answer is it's very infectious, surprisingly infectious, and most other viruses aren't so infectious. Um, so it, 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 it keeps going around from person to person. It's very small. It's very hard to stop. Right. So like very tiny fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the rhythm, I guess, is also very similar. The rhythm? Yeah, it's quite infectious, isn't it, the rhythm? Oh, yes, rhythm is infectious, yes. Yes, and yeah. yawning. Yes, yawning as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The person yawns, everyone else will yawn. So I wonder if actually yawns, we might be able to finally eliminate yawns because we're all self-isolating. That's fascinating, isn't it? If no one near you is yawning, you're not going to yawn, and therefore... They'll just die out. Oh, that's quite sad, though. How will people know that, you know, you're sleepy? Oh, you'll have to do the um, the stretchy your arms up bit rather than the yawning bit. Um, or yes. um, if you make a few letter Zs or Zs appear next to your head, then um, that will help. That's really good. But the, I get the Queen can't do that because then people will think it's some sort of whole different class of stamp. Oh, yeah. Also, it'll knock a crown off, which is uh, a risk. Um, yes yes of course also i find if i want if you know if i've got people around for uh for dinner or you know playing board games or whatever that a really good way to let them know that i'm quite sleepy and they should go is i i, I say oh i'm just nipping i'm just nipping out um you know and they'll think oh he's off to the bathroom um but then i come back in a full nightgown and <laughs> and a nightcap and holding um a candle on a little candle holder that's really impressive does that, does that work they don't stay long. I can I can tell you that. Yeah, I bet. I bet they don't. That's a really that's a really good tip. That that's a re- and I I think um I mean I I was I was wondering if you were going to suggest that you just go away and go to bed, but then I guess they stay in your house and they they don't yeah, know when to leave. They think well he he said he'd be back in a minute. It'd be very rude if I just left. So then yeah, stay longer. Um, they'll stay longer. Yeah. I shouldn't have questioned. Are you a professional with the, this sort of thing? I shouldn't have questioned uh, your methods there at all. That's all right. It's, you know, we all need to. We all need to be challenged in our own um, certainties. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that's so far. You, you've been giving some amazing answers, and we've got one final question from Molly, which I know that you know all about. Actually, this is the reason I asked you to answer these questions because I know you know all about this one. Um, Molly would like to know what do people do in space. Um. Absolutely nothing. They just don't do anything because nobody can um, see them. They're really they're miles away from everyone who might tell them to do any kind of washing up or any um, <clears throat> tidying or you know re- reading a book maybe or nobody's checking up on them. So they're free to do absolutely nothing. Just lie in um, in the in the rocket ship and uh, and watch TV. That's amazing. So when so when all these astronauts go on this big mission, they do all the big hoo ha. They're going away for six months to the International Space Station. They're having a lovely holiday. Oh yeah, they're just uh, they're 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 sunbathing. Um, they've got a pretty direct uh, view of the sun if they've got the right trajectory. Um, they uh, they read you know, comics. Um, they drink milkshakes. Um, and in fact, Neil Armstrong was absolutely furious when he had to get out of that that rocket to go on to the moon. Um, he was really grouchy about it because mm. uh, he was, you know, he suddenly had to work again. And um, yeah, yeah, and I think he said this is one, this is one uh, small step for man, uh, but uh, it's really, it's really irritating to have to do it. Yeah, I bet it's, I bet it's probably a bit like so. If you go on holiday and somebody you go on holiday with plans day trips, but you just want to lie on the beach. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and lucky old what's his name the. Um, you know, there's Neil and then Buzz and then the other one, and the other one didn't get to get out of the um, get out of the ship. But he was over the moon. He was oh, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> unintended. He was delighted. He thought, "Oh, brilliant! I get to just sit here and um, and play on my uh, play on my um, Nintendo Entertainment System, which he got uh, early." Uh, and the air, uh, the other two were, in, "Oh God, I want to go outside. I was having so much fun in this rocket ship, and now I've got to go and oh, it's dusty. There's nothing to do." Mm. Yeah, I, I'd be absolutely livid. I mean, space sounds great. You've really so I was a bit worried about the, you know, I don't like the idea of the cramped journey up there, and I thought that the lack of gravity. I thought that there's quite a lot that seems a bit scary. But now that it sounds like actually you just get to have a really chilled time, it sounds cool. Well, and remember, you it, it, it would it is it seems like it's cramped, but 
there's very few of you around. So actually, um, you know, it's quite roomy. Yeah, I suppose but, it is space, isn't it? Yeah, there's quite a lot of space. Yeah. That sounds great. Wow. Well, there you go. I mean, thank you so much for that. I feel that we've learned so much in this short time with you of just what people don't do in space, uh, you know, and, and the circle of fish and, and burping. This is this has been massively educational. So thank you so much, uh, John Luke, for all of that. Um, and I guess what are you going to do now? Are you sort of heading back to the roof to not be allowed on the roof? or? No, I'm going to set up a few uh, uh, a few traps. Oh. Is that someone's after French man? I guess that must be what that was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I guess if you get or if, if you get your trap set up quickly, then uh, you, you'll be safe. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's that's the that's the that's the. Sorry. When I I live so close to a police station that I've I've actually I just don't hear it when they uh when they so when you paused then I hadn't noticed there'd been a siren. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. You've become completely um, uh, sort of impervious to the, the sound of sirens. That's that's amazing. Yeah, it's just... Um, How yeah, would a policeman I, I, let you know they're there? Well, I, I'd be very hard. I think they'd have to... Um, they'd have to say... They'd have to say hello, hello, hello. Otherwise, I wouldn't... I wouldn't know. I mean, I that, is, that is the standard greeting, though. So I'm sure that that is the, yeah, they have to say it three times. Otherwise, they're not allowed to arrest you. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Definitely, yeah, definitely true. Definitely true. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Well, good luck with your uh, uh, never hearing sirens and uh, reef, uh, you know, training. And uh, and and hopefully see you in the real life soon. Yes, yes. Hopefully, one day. One day, one day in the future. <laughs> Well, Molly, I hope that has answered all your many, many questions, even if it has probably raised quite a lot more. Um, thank you, John Luke. I'll now spend today being absolutely terrified that I'm going to be eaten by a giant chip. Uh, if you have important questions you need to ask us and you aren't too busy avoiding a massive fish or setting traps for French man, uh, then please get a grown up type to help you get in touch at podcast at comedy club for kids dot co dot UK. Uh, you can ask us absolutely anything. Or if you just want to say hey or tell us a joke, then you can send that in too and I'll read those out. Um, also, please ask that grown up type to give us a five star review on the podcast apps they use. And we now have a Kofi site, which is spelled KO hyphen FI, which is pronounced Kofi, but I think it's like coffee. Who knows? Anyway, I've put that link in the podcast blurb if the grown-up types fancy buying us a hot drink to say thank you for all the tips that we've given you for new ways to annoy them. I know they're grateful. I know they're really pleased that you're just shouting, Mom! That was a regulatory alarm test. I'm sure they're really pleased about that. So if they'd like to buy us uh, a hot drink and contribute there, that would be very appreciated. OK, see you all next week, unless I've been scoffed by a massive smiley potato shape. Bye! You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents. Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Radio nonsense! Radio nonsense! Radio nonsense! It's the end.